these past few weeks been filled with scandal after tragedy after scandal for the Obama administration and we can't yet keep track of the investigations that are far from over. The veteran affairs scandal is littered with unanswered questions and uncertain investigations and Darren Selnick is here representing Concerned Veterans for America. He joins us now to help avoid brushing past this travesty of government authority which feels like where we really are it seems like not even two weeks ago Darren mm -hmm. we were it was constantly across your screen the VA scandal this has been something that patriots and those who uh, care a lot about our veterans and our troops have been screaming about for months or years really mm -hmm. um, and it was just now getting the headlines and then it's like something steals the headlines every single time it must be frustrating from your perspective to have the attention there to where you're probably getting 500 phone calls a day to the next day where some other tragedy takes the place of it and all of a sudden people go quiet again. Well, well sure. And, and that's why it's important uh, to be on shows like this. And we appreciate you, you having us on. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, sometimes the media has a short attention span and uh, a new big story, a POW swap comes and knocks it off. But uh, that's why we at Concerned Veterans for America, why we keep pushing and doing radio shows and television shows to keep it in front of the American public. Mm -hmm. uh, we just had an audit that came out that once again highlighted the big problems at the VA, the right. long waits and the deaths that are happening. And so, uh, so that's an audit, so we've defined the problem, but that doesn't fix it. Correct, correct. Yeah. And we have been working very hard on, on fixing this problem, and there's some promising legislation that we're hoping will get passed here very shortly. Even President Obama is supporting it. Well, at least verbally, we'll we'll find out yeah. because I think I think the proof is in the pudding personally. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but um, how much money does the government send to VA to fund it? How how much does this program cost that has become uh, such a mess? Well, it's now up to about 160 billion. When I first started working at the VA in 2001, it was at 48 billion. So it's over tripled. And the VA employees, whenever they have a problem, they just say, "Give me more money, give me more staff," and that's mm -hmm. not really the problem. A good way to illustrate it is if you were to see a cardiologist in the outside right. the VA, mm -hmm. that cardiologist would see 25 to 30 patients a day. We have reports of cardiologists like in New Mexico uh, from the VA only seeing two patients a day. Mm -hmm. So you can see if you're only seeing two patients a day versus 25, why it is that veterans can't get in appointments when the doctors aren't seeing the patients? Yeah, and I have to tell you, I was in an event last week in Temecula, and uh, there was a charity there um, that took, took wheelchairs and refurbished them mm -hmm. for veterans. And I thought, why? I mean, the Veterans Administration with that kind of fat budget isn't doing these kinds of simple things. She told me stories of veteran after veteran that she runs into in her life. Mm -hmm. This is a one-woman show. And she and they they have missing limbs. They're World War II veterans, and they they don't have functioning wheelchairs. What is something is so wrong here that that I mean, listen, I'm all about charity and I'm not about government, but this is this is proof positive that government shouldn't be in the business of charity because it doesn't do well. Mm -hmm. If it can't even handle the medical needs, uh, it, it's it's and it's got such a huge budget, the money's going somewhere. Where yeah. is it going? Well, a lot of it's going to solar panels, um, on, on, which aren't even plugged in, like in places like Phoenix. I mean, there's lots of missing. When I was at the VA, at the end of the year, it was always, we haven't spent our money. Let's spend it, spend it, spend it, spend it. And we've got so much fraud, waste, and abuse. I, I just, billion dollar hospitals, which started off as $600 million. Um, we have uh, money thrown away, $300 million from that training that no one knows what they're going to do with it. So the money's just being misused. Mm -hmm. the, the VA has just basically melted down in the last four mm -hmm. years. Checks and balances have evaporated. There's a climate of fear, intimidation, um, and even the FBI is now involved in, in probing what's going on at the VA. Mm -hmm. So all these diagnoses get attention. But my question is, when do the veterans get answers? Have you seen any real changes since they got all the attention on, on the VA? Well, the new acting secretary, at least verbally, is, is is going forward with some some reforms. Mm -hmm. We'll we'll see what actually happens because the VA is very good at promising stuff and, yeah. then, and not not delivering. Right. But he's you know. But what he should be doing is he should be cleaning house. Now, what we need is the the final version that was passed in the House and the Senate, which will do two things. One is accountability, where the VA secretary can actually fire these bad SES who've been been doing this and causing these deaths. And number two choice because the VA is monopoly and part of the problem as monopoly monopolies act as monopolies mm -hmm. 
And so they get sluggish, they become the DMV, post mm -hmm. office, mm -hmm. think of those sorts of things. Um, and if veterans could have that choice, the real choice to go outside the VA, that would what we call stop the bleeding. You know, the patient's bleeding, let's fire those accountable, but let's give veterans the choice to go outside the VA. And roughly we're talking about more than 40 miles or basically more than a 30-day wait. Mm -hmm. so, so how long do veterans have to wait until some of these changes take place? Because people are dying. We've, heard, we've all heard those testimonies. Yeah. Well, if the secretary was to do his job correctly, they don't really have to wait long. The secretary has the authority. They already have the authority to let veterans go outside. They just never wanted to let them do it. Mm -hmm. I hear that they're starting to do it, but once again, let's, let's see their actual numbers. But the secretary has great latitude. He could be firing people, removing them from their positions, sending them to the library, so to speak, until they can actually really fire, putting in good people. And he can go ahead and start allowing veterans. I've he heard of some stories that right now they're just stories about the golden ticket where the VA will call you and say, hey, we're going to let you go see whatever doctor. But these are things that could happen now, and then permanent reform can happen within weeks if the, if the, uh, the Senate and the House get it act together and goes ahead and does this compromise legislation and gets that out. Sounds to me like some hands-on management would help. When I talked to this lady about her wheelchair thing, she said that these veterans, mm -hmm. they would apply for the wheelchair. They get their they get their rejection letters in short order. Like maybe even within a week or two, they'd get their rejection mm -hmm. letters, and it would take them another six months, even longer sometimes, just to get in to a doctor. The rejection letters, they have that part, they have you know, that they have that down <laughs> pat, but we can't get them in to see doctors to save their lives, even if they have very serious situations going on. So, um, you know... It, it seems like a lot of mismanagement. It seems mm -hmm. like a lot of bloated bureaucracy. It is. Um, and it seems like there should just be some simple common sense answers here. Well, the, I, I like the one you mentioned. Are there others? Well, well there are. I mean, we have, we have uh, like you said, bloated bureaucracy. We have just a lot of incompetent management um, that are in place. And, and you know, that's a longer term, term fix. Um, but yes, they, they, the central office and the secretary can direct to, for them to stop using the no button, start using the yes button, mm -hmm. and start expediting. We, we've seen this happen. We had a problem in, in the TRICARE uh, the other year. Well, I'm a TRICARE Prime member. Mm -hmm. what, they did, what they did when they had this sort of problem, uh, temporary, they just said, look, just submit. We'll just authorize it. We'll just authorize it until we get this thing fixed. They could just start authorizing mm -hmm. it until it gets fixed. Basically, though, it takes the secretary to do it. So that's the short term. The secretary must say, just do it. You know, use an Nike slogan, <laughs> just do it. Just do it. In the longer term, though, we need a new VHA undersecretary where with an acting. Uh, we need a reformer like we had in 1995, a reformer from the outside like a Dr. Cosgrove who was suggested who, re who wouldn't do it. Um, from the industry who knows how to fix these problems. Yeah, somebody that's in. from a, a private industry that exactly. knows how to build a business from a competitive model. Who, who can use industry standards, who knows patients in a yeah. day, not And who has a track record and, and maybe a reputation to maintain rather exactly. than just some bureaucrat that's been appointed. Yeah. Yeah, because I was told by oh, uh, somebody that worked there that they were told to reject everything they could because mm -hmm. that would literally their paychecks would go down. Once once people started complaining about these budgets, if uh, their paychecks, so they better re be rejecting everything they can. Pitting the, the VA employees seems to me to be one of the most twisted, sick things I'm Which yeah. is supposed to be dealing with veterans first and the bureaucracy later. They should be the gold plate. They should be what everyone, they should be treated like royalty in this country. Yes, they should be treated like, like family, with 30% yeah. of the employees being veterans. And that's the way we were treated at the Naval Hospital over in Oceanside when my, when my wife had some surgery. We were treated like family. Unfortunately, it used to be that way, but it's not that way anymore. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you staying on top of this, always letting us know what's happened uh, with the latest things. People can find you at Concerned Vets on Twitter. They can go to cv4a.org on the net and find out how they can be helpful to all the things that you're doing. Darren Selnick, thank you so much for being with us Thanks, today. Kitty.